Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. As you can see, I'm with my very precious and wonderful friend, Bill Bauer. <laughs> Bill, I'm so glad you could be with me again today. Yeah, so am I, Sylvia. I just love doing these programs with you and sharing the liberating secret, what's really, uh, really basically saved my life. The passion of our heart, yes, isn't it? It, really, it is. really is the passion of our heart. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Bill. He lives in Pasadena, California. And he he is a tennis pro at UCLA. Right. Likes and actually, you're going to teach our grandson some, give him some free tennis lessons. Yes. What a blessing that is! Yes, I'm looking forward to that, Sylvia. Those and also, fun. but also, he's an actor. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, well, I've, I've there have been two passions in my life other than Jesus, and uh, one is sports, and ended up being a good tennis player and the other one is acting which i've been doing since i was a little kid and always decided i had to do something that was fun and i wanted to work at something that was fun and uh i wasn't much of a sitting behind a, a desk you know eight hours a day so i've been doing both things since i was a little kid having a great time i know it i so, know uh, that's wonderful well uh, let let me do a little advertisement before we start our presentation oh, sure. Uh, we've already done two actual presentations. One of them is called A Common Bush. Could you hold that up? Wow. Common Bush. Every, anybody that would like to get that series, uh, they can get it on our website, theliberatingsecret.org. Also, we did another one, and this is more recent than the first, and it kind of sounds like a Dr. Seuss thing. <laughs> uh, people have told me that a lot. It's called It's Not a How-To. It's a how who, and the who is not you. Now, you better find out what that means, because that one's a very good series, too. And I think they're both dynamite. But just, just today, we were going through, going through some of the different teachings that I've done through the years, and we came across one that we just dearly love. And we, I always love doing it, and it's called What is Man? That is an all-important point to bring out because most people love Jesus, but they don't understand themselves, do That's they? Right. And so uh, we intend, you know, today to start on that series, What is Man series. So um, before we start, let me just read this. I always like to read this. This is Major W. E. N. Thomas. He wrote this years ago, I would say. And this is what he says. If you are a Christian, I have no blessing to offer you because you have them all in Jesus Christ. All you can do is begin to discover the blessings in Him that you already have, but have not yet possessed in experience. Mm -hmm. The moment you are redeemed and the moment the Lord Jesus Christ has come to indwell your redeemed humanity, God has given you the plenitude of heaven. You will never be wealthier than the day you were redeemed, but you can live in self-imposed poverty the rest of your life if you want to. What we want to do is to discover how to and explore and enjoy all that God has already given us if you are saved. Now, I love this part. This is kind of a stinger. Yes. It will be the devil's business to prevent it. Mm. The devil's business will be in trying to prevent the fullness of what we can, we have in Jesus Christ, oh, what wow. we have inherited. So we're going to talk about that. And the presentation really comes from Scripture, What is Man? 1 in Psalms 8 and also in Hebrews chapter 2. And let me, let me just start by reading that Scripture. And then we're going to go to the chart and you can... We're, we're going to then see exactly how, how we've put this down in a, as a chart presentation. Psalm, uh, Psalms chapter 8 at verse 2. It says this, chap, verse 4, 
What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou did visit him? For thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Hmm. Magnificent wow. being that we were first created to be. Listen, thou made him to have dominion over the works of his hands. We, we still are in that business, are we oh, not? That's right. For the redeemed, yes. that is true. That's right. Thou hast put all things under his feet. And then that picks up again in the book of Hebrews. Now, some of the translations say a little lower than angels, but the right correct translation is that, the, that man, the human being, originally was created a little lower than Elohim himself. Is that well, magnificent? It really is. It really is. It really is. So that's the, that is the name of this series, What is Man? All right, you know what I would like to do is go to the chart, and I want to, we're going to look at the first, actually we call this chart the four eyes. And if we'll just look at it a minute, you will see there's one, two, three, four eyes here. Now we're going to look at the first eye, and we're going to discuss it. Now look at it, you can see the first eye has being over it. And that actually is wrong self. So you see a great big eye with Satan over it. That's, a, that's amazing. And the scripture under it is Ephesians 2, 2, 2, 3. Okay, now let's discuss that. Let's discuss that first eye. And can I say one thing, Sylvia? Okay. I was just thinking, you know, uh, as Sylvia goes through this, you know, uh, the, many of us have heard that we're in union with Jesus Christ. We've been, even read people from the past, maybe uh, what some people would term Christian mystics, you know, who experienced a new union with God. So what Sylvia put together in her chart was, is there a way that one can really know by revelation and experience that they're in union with Christ? And are there stages that you can uh, you can come to know kind of where you're at in that journey into union with Christ. You actually are in union with Christ, but there's a stages of uh, progress isn't the right word, but there's stages that you go through until you come into that to know that. Well, it's really stages of understanding, just like Paul says that the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened mm -hmm. to what you already have in Christ. Right. And because we've been so our minds have been blinded really by satanic thinking. Mm. You see, God can't give us all the light all at once. He has given us the person of Christ all at once. Mm. But you see, when we're born again, we're born again of his, of Christ. And he has come inside of us and his spirit is joined to our spirit. Mm. But there has to be an awakening to what we really already have. Yeah. And God does it in stages. I mean, even in the book of First John, in the New Testament, it says that John is saying, I'm writing to you, little children. And then he says, I write unto you, young men. And then as he says, I write unto you, father. So there's different understandings right. growing up in what you already have. And it's not really that you're, you're getting something different or right. more. You're just realizing what you already have. Discovering what discovering, you already have. Discovering exactly mm -hmm. what you already have. And then, by faith, possessing your possessions, mm -hmm. what's mm -hmm. already yours. You know, I always say it's like the children of Israel. They already possessed the promised land. It was theirs. But they had to go across the Jordan River. And uh, it's not that it wasn't theirs, but they had to possess it by faith. That's really good. And, and that's right. That's really good. And so we're like that. It's already ours, but we have to possess it by faith. So God does give us stages. And actually, you know, Galatians 2.20 is like that. There's mm -hmm. five eyes in Galatians 2.20. <laughs> right. And we're going to go through that as well. And, of course, that's our identity verse. Right. The Galatians 2.20, if you want to know what your true identity is, you turn to that book, Galatians, in the Bible, and you will see that is your true identity. And what Sylvia is saying here with, with the stages, the first, well, a very important stage that we've misunderstood is what is a human being? What is a human? What is the mm -hmm. function of the human? We've had a misunderstanding of what the human is in relationship to God. So that's what we're 
going to pretty much start mm -hmm. out with here, right? Well, that's right. And also, Bill, we're talking to Christians that are really already born again, that know that Christ, they know the Holy Spirit. They know Christ is in them. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not clear on exactly about their human self. I think that's where the problem is. Right. That's why discovering the humanity, the human being, and because most people think, you know, there's something terribly wrong with me. I've got Jesus, but there's something wrong with my humanity. Right. That's what we're going to clear up. Right. That's a big one. That's a huge I one. Mean, that, it yeah. really is. Wow. But so, so as we showed you before, we, uh, we're going to look at the first eye. And, and by the way, any of these charts that we show you, they're going to be right on our website. So anybody can go to our website and they'll be able to just pull this right off. Also, if you write me, I'll be, I can send you a, a small copy of this chart presentation. Actually, I have it. I like to say it can be a reference or a teaching tool for anybody if they would like to really teach these stages of understanding yeah. our union with Christ. So, mm -hmm. but as as I said before, we looked. We're going to look at the first ad that mm -hmm. has being above it, and we call that wrong self. Now, the the amazing thing here that is so hard for most people to really grasp is, mm. is who we were before we were even saved. Mm. So we start this presentation as lost people. Who were we before we were saved? You know, one time mm. a friend of mine, um, she started reading the Bible and she just got saved and she had didn't have any understanding. She called one of the churches in our area and she said, what have I been saved from? And they said, we don't know. <laughs> so... I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there were people in that church that did know, but this particular person did not know. It's very important to see what we've been saved from, mm, Bill. Mm, yes. We've been, and I like to use the word delivered, mm. because the Bible says we've been delivered out of uh, the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Right. We've been delivered out of one dark, one dark kingdom, satanic dark kingdom into another kingdom of light. Mm. So it's deliverance. And I know people say, say use the word saved, but that, that word means deliverance, mm. actually. So as I said, we're going to look at the first eye. The first eye does have the word Satan over it. Now, why would I do that? Why would mm. we do that, Bill? Well, the, the Bible says... Uh, that you're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. It does. Uh, he says to the Pharisees, you're of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father you do. So what we, you're either a vessel of wrath or you're a vessel of mercy. So uh, what, it's, what, what we're saying here is that before you're born again, you just think you're just you, just living life. I'm just me with a life of my own. But you, you don't know the Ephesians 2 verse that you once walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, and were by nature vessels of wrath. So you don't know that there's another spirit operating in you before you were a Christian. You think you're just you living your own life, doing your own thing, being the captain of your own ship, but you have no idea that you're being operated, controlled, influenced, more, even more than influenced, but uh, that there's another spirit living his life out by means of you as if it were just you, but you don't really realize you're not just you living life. You're being operated by another spirit. And so that's why I think that's... Well, you, you did an excellent job. <laughs> Thank you. I do want to read that scripture to, to, to you because that it, it's so important to see that. So if you have your Bible, hope you do, turn to Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm mm. going to read 1 through 3. And this is what it says. Mm. It says, And you who he, meaning Christ, hath quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. So I always say before we're saved, we're dead men walking. Mm. It says you're dead in trespasses mm. and sins. Mm. And then it says this, 
wherein in times past it, and he's of course talking to Christians here in the book of Ephesians. So he means before you were saved, this is how you live. This is how you walk. This is what was in you. This is what was dominating you. This is what was controlling you. Listen to what it says. Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this er world. The course of this world the Bible says in 1 John that the whole world lies in the lap of the evil one. Mm. So the whole course of this world mm. is operated by a satanic spirit and satanic spirits, really. Wow. Yeah. And that spirit of Satan is really a self for self for self, me for me for me spirit. So, I mean, you, we, can, mm. we can really see logically that most people that do not know the Lord, they're just for themselves. They might try to act like they're good part of the time. They might even have be a little religious, right. but yet basically they're for themselves. You see, so it's not until we're born again of another spirit, the spirit of Christ, are we really born again? That's what yeah. born again means. Okay, now what, it, so otherwise you're walking not according to your own self, but according to the, to the world. And then it says, according, and I love that word. In other words, you're not walking according to what you're thinking or doing. Mm. You're, you're being mastered by a, a spirit. And it says, according to the prince of the power of the air. Well, we know that's Satan. Mm. The spirit that works in the children of disobedience. Mm. And that's right, mm. because we're all vessels and so, like you quoted in Romans chapter 9, it says we're either vessels of God's mercy because we've been saved. So the human is really a vessel that's been saved. And, that, and so we're filled with God's mercy and love because we're filled with Christ, really. Mm. Or before we're saved, we're a vessel of wrath. So, I mean, no wonder there's so many wars and rumors of wars. Right. Because if mankind before he's saved is filled with wrath. I mean, a lot of times we hide it and try to be nice people, but underneath, if we're not getting our own way, we're pretty much full of wrath, aren't we? Right. We're seeing that more and more in our world today. Yeah. So guess what? We need to be born again mm -hmm. of God's Spirit. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. It's not good enough to be religious, because Nicodemus was pretty religious. Mm -hmm. Not right. good enough to be religious, you have to be born again of another spirit. You know what? A lot of people don't like these terms. I mean, born again, you, remember when Jimmy Carter uh, was a president and we said, oh, he's a born again president. Then, then everybody started mocking that phrase and making fun of it. Well, I mean, it's a biblical phrase. It's what Jesus is saying. And to those that are saved, we love that, say, that saying, but that really that truth. Because it is true, we have to be born again of God's spirit. Because we've had a false spirit, we've had a satanic spirit within yes. us. And this says this, listen to the next verse in verse 3. Among whom also we, ha we all had our conversation, that means our lifestyle, in times past, in the lust of our flesh. All we want, we were just like an empty hole and that couldn't be filled up. Yeah. lusting after this and mm. desiring that and having to have this and needy, needy, needy me. That's all we were. Mm. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh the best we could, trying to fill the heart-shaped vacuum that C.S. Lewis says mm. that every man has yes. before he has Christ. And of the mind, and certainly was, you know, the desires of the mind, anything I can think of, you know, they can make me happy. That's what I want. Mm. And you see, nothing is going to satisfy the human heart until Jesus moves into the human hearts right. and sets us free. Right. And we're by nature the children of wrath, <laughs> even as others. And, of course, First John says mm. we were the children of the devil, just mm. like you said. Mm. Amazing statement. Mm. And he said to the religious leaders of his day, you are of your father the devil. So... You know, most of us, most people don't like to hear that, do they, no, Bill? They don't. They, I, and it's this other scripture comes to my mind. I'm just uh, trying to remember it, but I think it's in First Peter, maybe, uh, about uh, being cap taken captain captive by the devil to do his will. Yeah, right. We're really doing the will 
of our father, the devil, a false father, the devil before we're born again. But people don't like to hear it. But if you explain to them, you know, what is the devil's nature? It's self for self, me right. for me, and to heck with you. You know, and you see that in the world today, this self-centeredness that people operate out of. And even if they do good things, it actually always comes back to them. Oh, I'm, I'm this good person because I'm doing this. So it comes back to self, um, you know, just feeling pretty good about itself, that right. they're good. And when God says, call no man good, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's only one good and that's God. So, mm -hmm. And also Romans 5 says that through Adam, we've all sinned. Mm. So we didn't wake up one morning when we were 10 years old and decide, oh my gosh, I stole money from my mother's purse, so I sinned. Because sin really is, is a spirit of sin that lives in us, causing us to be the sinners that we really are. And uh, so uh, actually we're not really you know, we're cooperating with the spirit within us because we right. like it. You know why? Because the satanic spirit, the self or self spirit, may, we love pride. We love to feel like we're doing something great. And so we love to accomplish and have pride. And pride is really uh, satanic, isn't yeah. it? It's pride because you, you it's either humility or pride. It's it sounds like Lucifer in the beginning. <laughs> yes, it it is because he's put his own consciousness, his own mind inside mm. of us, causing us to think we're just us. Mm. Another thing I like to say is, Bill, I mean, when you were lost, did you get up every morning and say, oh, Satan, how can I serve you? <laughs> no, no, I was just serving did him. Spontaneously. Yeah, spontaneously right. right. Did you say, oh, I've got to read the satanic Bible to figure out what to do? <laughs> no, no. Well, the point of that is when we are truly born again and we know who we are, we know who's living in us and who, who is our life, you see, then we can, we can know that we can spontaneously express Christ. Just really, it's, it, it's almost parallel to mm -hmm. the way we used to just be, you see, because we're just being like we saw in that first I, we're just mm -hmm. being ourselves. But we really think, but we really don't know is we're not just, we can't be just ourselves. Right. That always the human being is, uh, it was created to contain and express God. You see, we are created to contain and express God. And we're a derivative being. We're really going to go into that further as we go on into this presentation. Yeah, Sylvia is really clearly saying is that, you know, we thought we were just ourselves, just us with a life of our own before we were a Christian, when it was really another, a spirit who was operating, disguising himself as if it were us. Yes. And so then this this separate self that we think we are, that is living life and, you know, is needs to, you know, uh, control life and, you know, be the captain of, of our own ship, that kind of thing, that really isn't us. It's a That's false right. phantom self uh, that is disguising itself as us. And when, unfortunately, it's carried over into the Christian well, life. Well, that, that's right. And we're going to have, but, but you know, when you're lost, you really don't see the inner, be, you don't see the producer of what's, what, of the sins that's happening inside you. Really, all you see is the product, which are sins. And so there you see you're a guilty sinner. Mm. And so then we're, then, then we find out how to be saved. And, we'll, and certainly we know that we're saved by grace and faith alone in Christ. We're saved Christ plus nothing. So the gospel comes along, somebody comes along and shares the gospel with us that Christ came to die for our sins and actually die for the very sin nature that we were indwelt with. Right. But we don't know that in the beginning. Yeah. All we can really take is that he paid the price for our sins. So we embrace the blood of Jesus Christ, mm. the blood of Jesus and what can take away our sin? Nothing but mm. the blood of Jesus. Mm. Wow, and that's a, that is wonderful. And instead of animal sacrifices, a person, the Lord Jesus mm. Christ, a man came in the likeness of sinful flesh and was made sin on our behalf. Mm. Boy, we're going to go into that one, well, too. Right, yeah. We're really going to go in to see exactly what 
what benefits we have from the blood of Jesus Christ also, but the Bible also says that we're sanctified by his body mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. We're going to go into that as well. But right now, you know, I see our time is almost over. So, um, uh, Bill, is there anything you would like to share right before we end? We have about well, one more minute. Just that I, this has been so liberating for me over the years to find out uh, the lie of not being a separate self apart from Jesus. And uh, because that muddied the waters of union with Christ, I couldn't really quite see how Christ was living in me in a union if I didn't get the human me straight that it wasn't an independent me, that the human me was only a vessel that expressed uh, the spirit in me, you know, that we were containers expressing the spirit in me. So I didn't get that clear that I wasn't a separate self apart from Jesus, that I was united to him. So we'll go into more of that. Yes, we will. Well, you know, we're going to go into the next I on the chart next time next time we we're see so be sure to tune in because we, we we are really going to examine this this problem that that the man really has not understanding himself we really don't have clear discernment mm -hmm. about the human being and that's why this presentation is called what is man so thank you for joining me and bill is going to mm -hmm. continue being with me as we go through this journey to see the fullness of how we can know that Christ lives in us and is our very life and walks out through us mm. and as us. Wow. wow, that's huge. So thank you for joining me and may God richly bless you. Goodbye. Bye bye. You've been watching Liberating Secret with Sylvia Pierce. We want to send a special thank you to all our supporters to make this program possible. If you've been blessed by this program, and would like to contact Sylvia, you can write her at P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. That's P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. You can also find more of Sylvia's teachings on our website. The web address is www.theliberatingsecret.org. That's www.theliberatingsecret.org. And be sure to watch again right here Monday through Friday at the same time for The Liberating Secret with author and teacher Sylvia Pierce. So until next time, may God richly bless you.